Hi, in this video I'll tell you how I tried to implement TCP protocol myself. Let's go! I started with the simplest thing possible, binary serialization of TCP packets. I took the packet structure from RFC 9293 and added it to the code. The process of serialization should be quite easy. Put all the fields into a buffer one by one and you all set. Well, not exactly. In reality, TCP dump couldn't even recognize my packet. After some debugging, I found all the problems, but I also wanted to calculate the checksum myself to fully engage with TCP. Turned out, the checksum requires not only the TCP packet, but also an IP packet. And at that point, I decided to throw it all away and use a library called GoPacket to do this stuff for me. Serialization is not the main topic of this video anyway. And finally, I can easily craft both IP and TCP packets without headache and send them anywhere. Let's quickly build a simple TCP server that listens on port 9000. And now, if I send my packet to the loopback interface with the same destination port, the server should read and respond, right? Well, I was wrong again. I received something, of course, but turned out it was the same packet I just sent. And I was really confused when I realized that. But everything was correct, actually. That's just how the loopback interface works. I checked TCP dump again and saw no response from the server. After some research, I found out that I can't just craft some random packet and send it to the operating system because the OS will reject it. I decided to go different paths and create my own virtual interface that I have full control over. These virtual interfaces are called TAN interfaces. They carry IP packets and used in all sorts of VPNs. A TAN interface is similar to a real physical one that the OS uses to send my packets to the internet. The difference is, instead of sending packets to the internet, the OS sends them to my application. I configured the interface entirely through the code, from creation and activation to assigning an address and reading and writing bytes. After all these steps, the OS finally recognized my virtual interface and I even received some packets. I don't actually know what these packets are and where they came from, but it doesn't matter, I want to send my own packets. And to do that, I'm gonna use a utility called Netcat. But before that, we need to figure out which IP address and port to use. The US tells us that it routes all packets with the destination addresses inside this subnet to my interface. And it also changes the source address to this value. As for port, it actually can be any value because it's our responsibility to manage it in this case. So basically I can write something like this and the packet appears in my application. But what is this packet? What does it mean? If we look at the flags, we can see the scene flag is set. It's so-called scene packet, the first step of the TCP handshake. It basically means that Netcat is offering us to establish a connection and to be polite, we need to send something in return. Let's send a scene egg packet, the second step of the handshake. After that, we receive another packet with egg flag set and it means we've just successfully established the connection and ready to exchange some data. But before that, I want to rewrite my code so I can store all the TCP connections and their states in a map. Yes, every TCP connection has a state, so it can keep track of the data it sends and receives. This is how TCP keeps things reliable. In fact, TCP has a full finite state machine and it's quite large. I couldn't even implement half of it, so I'm using only two states seen received and established. That's actually enough to read and write data. A connection enters the scene received state when it gets a scene packet and after completing the TCP handshake it moves to the established state. This is where all the TCP magic happens. After all that I tried to implement reading data. It became easy once I understood what these variables mean. More precisely first two of them. Every byte of data in the TCP protocol has its own sequence number and both sides of the connection keep track of them using the state variables. Basically, the two variables I just mentioned construct a receive window and incoming data is valid and accepted only if all its sequence numbers fall within this window. If the window is full, the TCP peer needs to acknowledge the received data, otherwise it can't receive more. So I've implemented the simplest version of reading. First I check that all sequence numbers of an incoming packet are within the receive window. If it's true, I read the data and update the variables. 
After that, I immediately sent an acknowledgement packet back to Netcat. The acknowledgement number in this packet should be equal to the last sequence number we've got. So Netcat knows all the data has been delivered successfully. Let's once again listen on port 9000 and try to send an HTTP request. And of course everything works flawlessly, because I spent a lot of time debugging this in the background. We've got the full HTTP request with all its internals. This is only a small part of the whole picture, I haven't even implemented writing yet. But doing this stuff was already quite a challenge for someone who didn't know anything about TCP. If you want me to implement writing and connection closing as well, please let me know. All the code is available at the link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.